<laughs> we are live. We're live. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to Patchwork Party, December what? Thirteenth. Thirteenth. Sure. <laughs> December thirteenth. Our last patchwork party of the year. So I hope this works. We're gonna just talk for a couple seconds and make sure that everybody can see me and hear me. Please shout out. Let me know how it looks. Let me know how it sounds so that we know before we get to the important information because we don't want to miss anybody. I'm Karen and we are here at So and Save for Patchwork Party, December 13th, 2021. Like I said, this is our last patchwork party of the year. Um, we will do our another patchwork party come January. Are you ready? 2022? Mm-hmm. Ooh, this, this little <laughs> iron's hot. Um, <laughs> ooh. Uh, Coming in clear from Kathy Strandell. Hi, Kathy Strandell. Hi, Lynn. How are ya? And and Excellent. I'm so glad that you could all join us. I'm glad it's looking good. We're going to just keep talking for a couple more minutes because it usually is good. And then it's like, no, it's going to be good. It's good. It's good tonight. We're as close to the, the router as we can get. Um, and we've got lots of fabulous things to show you tonight. There's a few new fabrics of course we're waiting every day we wait for more fabric but like yep don't forget to like us don't forget to share us don't forget to follow us so that you don't miss a thing and when you like us and share us and follow us tonight your name will go in for a um a gift card drawing at the end of the night so please comment too. We'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions as I'm going through, just shout out and I will try to answer any questions that you might have. We've got lots of new fabrics coming in. Oh, so many cute things for next year. Can't wait. And there's some things that we're waiting for, of course, for December that haven't shown up yet. But every time something comes in, we are so happy. That's all I can say. And I just want to thank everybody who came to our Customer Appreciation Day on Saturday. We had a fabulous time. There was tons of food and lots of people and everybody was sitting in the classroom chatting and we had a great sale. So it was fun to see everybody and we want to thank everybody who came and participated. And if you didn't come, you missed out because it was a good time. A good time was had by all. So we just want to thank you for coming and, um, you know, we'll do it again. We've got lots of fun things planned for next year. And um, just as long as you're following us, and liking us and sharing, you will get all the information on all the upcoming events of which we have many. Well, so there is a discount code as with every patchwork party, everything that I show you tonight um, will be is in the patchwork party section of our website. Go to shop and then scroll down to you hit patchwork party. Everything that I show you tonight is in the patchwork party section of the website. Use the coupon code K, wait, PP20. PP20. It's the same every month. I was thinking of KWK Creating with Karen, um, which we're going to do next year. Um, we're going to do a Creating with Karen, a couple, maybe a couple Creating with Karens. Um, we're going to go on vacation for two weeks, hopefully, um, <laughs> hopefully, um, starting um, next week. And so I've already got a plan. What am I going to work on while we're gone? What am I going to think about? What are we going to work on? We're going to do some creating with Karen. We're going to do um, the Sizzling Summer series like we did last summer where we did a pro like I think we did four projects every other week during the summer. That was a lot of fun. So people were saying we were hoping we would do that. But for tonight, everything that you see is in the Patchwork Party section of our website. PP20 gets you 20% off of all the Patchwork Party items all week long. Um, so... I hope you can uh, see some goodies. I've got lots and oh, I've got lots of fast, easy, awesome little projects that you can get done by Christmas. Literally takes like 10, 15 minute projects. Honest, honest. I'm not. I'm not sure. sure. Most of it, yes. Very, very fast. Very, very easy. I'll tell you if they're not going to be fast, and I'm going to tell you if they're not going to be. They're all easy, but they might not all be fast. But there's a lot of really fun ones. So. I think we'll get started. Does, do I still look good? Do I still sound good? You always look good. 
Yeah, oh, oh, he's he's hoping for the big Christmas gift this year. Yeah, I ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen, but thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> but so good, I'm glad you can hear me, glad you can see me, because we've got lots of stuff to do. So 61 people. Well, I think then we can get started with things. I'm gonna kind of come out from behind and I'm gonna kind of work my way over this way a little bit. Um, I'm coming over to this little um, wall hanging. Great for your doorway. Okay, maybe not super fast. You could get this done. Probably, I got it done in a day, so you could probably get it done in a weekend. Um, really super fun and fast and easy. Great to hang like in your doorway or, you know, in a, sometimes you guys got that long skinny area that you don't know what to put something in. This tree is fabulous. It is made out of this ombre, um, green ombre fabric from Michael Miller. So this is the jade and it has all the little kind of look like little trees in it. So you can see that out of this piece of fabric, if I opened this up, it would start and it would be this dark and then it goes all the way up to light. So really, so it's all in one length of this fabric to make this tree. So we have kits available in the patchwork party section of our website and just the, pat the patterns as well in case you have some ombre fabric or just different greens that you would like to make, use to make this project. It's not real tough, it was pretty easy. And like I said, probably not a done in weekend. And kind of something, it's not necessarily Christmas. It could kind of be up all winter long with your greens and your t and things. So it doesn't necessarily screen Christmas. We have snowflakes on the background and um, snowflakes quilted in. She did a fabulous job of um, putting some quilt quilted snowflakes in there it is 20 inches by 54 and it's the tall tree wall hanging so really fun it's the fabric that really makes this project so the project is in the patchwork party section of our website i'm going to set that down really slow okay then we have a new line of fabric from wyndham and it goes all the way along here and then down through here and i'll show you one that kind of where you can really see what it looks like. I think like even like this green maybe. So it's called Spectrum. And it kind of has, I don't know, kind of a brush strokey look to it. How do you want me to turn it? Sideways. Sideways. This way? Does that work for you? Maybe this way? Okay. It kind of has like a brush strokey look to it. Really kind of cool lights, light colors, lights and darks in there. And it's a whole line of... Um, basics from Wyndham, all the colors of the rainbow. It's really pretty. Yeah, we sold a lot of this over the weekend. People were, people were really happy to see this. So I'm gonna let Joe kind of come and show you the whole spectrum of colors. So it's up, up here and then that first row on the bottom there, Joe. So all the colors of the rainbow, really pretty. That is in the um, patchwork section of our website. So if you're interested in some um, cuts of that, you can pick those up. Yeah, the colors are very pretty. Um, that, that, we're gonna look at that. Can't look at that, yeah. Okay, that, those down there. Look at those teals and greens and blues and the purples, really nice. Love those fabrics. If you like them, put, give us a thumbs up on those. So that's that one. So brand new Spectrum from Wyndham. Very fun. Then on Friday, we got, I was gonna say we got this new line. Well, we got half the new line. Um, so, whoa, whoa. yeah, whoa, whoa. So, well, we did get the panel, so that's an important part. So a new baby flannel, soft as soft as can be. Oops, let me grab this here. It's called Sweet Dreams. How cute is that? Flannel, really fun flannel. This is a really, really soft flannel. It's that double-sided flannel that's so nice. Sweet Dreams panel. And then you can kind of see some of the um, go with the really cool go with <laughs> These are pretty nice. But they've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got seven out of 15 bolts. So like all the really, I don't want to say really cool ones, but there's some like this one. I'll kind of show you this one close up. 
This one's kind of the, the oh, it doesn't even look like this. I take it back. Um, it has like the little lambs and sheep, all these little lambs and sheep all kind of scattered on there. And it has like, there's a yellow background, a blue background, um, kind of a, a gray background. And so those are the really cool ones. Tuesday, they said tomorrow by the end of the day, it should be here. So we got one box, still waiting on the next box. But so next month, oops, <laughs> nice panel. Um, <laughs> next month, we will, we already have a project picked out. So we're gonna wait till the other pieces come in and you will see a finished project with this, but you can kind of start if you like the panel and some of these go with, so you can kind of get started. We'll probably do a little pillowcase to go with. Very sweet. Beautiful, this is soft there, so soft. Maybe we'll put some um, cuddle on the back. That would be a really fun. Um, a couple months ago, well, I think over the summer, we did a cityscape quilt. Well, this is kind of the next generation of this fabric and it's called City Lights and masculine quilt. Well, I think this is kind of a masculine quilt. Very cool. This is the line, it's called City Underneath It from Northcott. Those are on our website for, um, for Patchwork Party this month or this week. And this is great because we also have the um, wide back that goes with it. So it has a, so that, so that your backing matches the front of your quilt. Really fun, fun quilt to make. Not really super difficult. Yep, you could get a close up of some of those pieces. Really, really kind of cool. Called City. Yep, that's the fabric line underneath and I should have grabbed the pattern because the pattern has different sizes, um, different quilt sizes. So there are bigger size quilts for this. So I think this is probably a lap and I think there's, you know, a king and a queen or whatever. And then there's also a table runner. So the table runner was really cool too. Yeah, it's a really, really slick pattern. If I'm any indication, I like it. I right, see, it's kind of a guy thing. I think it's a guy quilt, but it's really nice. And I love this background. I think this background is really cool. The background, it comes in this kind of um, white with a little blue, or this has a little gray fleck in it. There's a blue one here, and there's a gray right over by Joe's hand, um, or a kind of a brown backgroundy one too. So if you were more into the browns, and then here's a blue one. So that one's cool too. So just really nice kind of scratchy kind of backgroundy kind of thing. So that's, so that's quick, that quilt. City Lights, the one that we made is 64 by 64, so it's square. Um, but there are other sizes in the pano, pattern and um, a table runner as well. I will do that. So, <clears throat> um, so all the things that I'm showing you tonight are in the Patchwork Party section of our website. Um, be sure to like us, share us, comment, follow. And when you do that, your um, name will go in to win a gift card at the end of the night. And the drawing will happen at the end of the night. We'll post the winners. And um, any of the things that you see, like I said, are in the Patchwork Party section of their website. And the coupon code is PP20. So use the coupon code PP20. You'll get 20% off of these items. So there's that. So I'm going to kind of go on and show you. Um, we have some really fun panels um, for Christmas from Buttermilk Basin. <clears throat> and she's got, she's got a couple panels. So we have this one. And they come, I think we have, there's four in a pack. There's four in a pack. So there's one, or maybe there's two. There's this one and this one together in a pack. This would make a great pillow, a great just finish it off and add some fabric to make a little table topper. Um, these two make some, some really cute towels. So kind of the, um, the feed sack type towels. This one says Merry Christmas. Cool. Yeah, and all I did on these is just surge around the edges and you could call it a day. You could surge around the edge and fold it and 
and stitch it if you want to. I'll show you in a minute. I put some binding around a couple and that looks really cute. So here's another one that's a the little feed sack one for buttermilk basin for Christmas. Makes great Christmas gifts, super quick, especially if you have a serger, you can just serge it up and you'd be done. But in front here, right down, um, I took these and I just put a little binding around it. So I just stitched it. I just stitched a little binding. Do you want me back? <laughs> Does that work? Okay. So a little binding around this one, two, two, col two color binding. I put one on top and then a different color on the side. And this one I did the same. This one's not quite finished. So you can see that I just took and just did like a single fold bias tape, bias binding, folded it, folded it over. And then I just stitched in the ditch and stitched it down. You could use some steam -a seam on there. steam -a seam would hold it, make it even faster. And steam -a seam holds forever and is not gonna come apart. So it makes a really, really cute towel for the holidays. Really fun, super fast. These were buttermilk, but let me tell you exactly what they're called. Let me tell you. So the first ones that I showed you with the Santas on, those are called Christmas at Buttermilk Acres, and it's called a 24 inch panel. Okay. Yeah, so it was, I don't have the whole panel open, but it has these two guys on it. This guy, one panel has this, and the other has this. So that's one, although I feel like there's, okay, we're opening one. We're just gonna open one. I know that the towel one, this one is Christmas, is a 24 inch tea towel, tea towel canvas panel. And that has these two towels on it. This one and this one. Okay, and the other panel has these two guys on. This one, and this one's called the pillow panel, Santa pillow panel, I think, and this one. So super fun. You could just take, you could make one pillow. This could be the front, this could be the back. Stuff it, done. Love it. I might do that yet with these two. Okay, so I'm gonna set these aside. Any other questions on these? Super fun and fast and easy. That's what we like at this time of year. Because time's a ticking, isn't it? Time is a ticking, so there's not a whole lot of time left before the holidays. Okay, this is a lot of fun. This is my little Santa hat. Um, can, you put it on? can I, are you asking me? No, the whole, all your Oh, they did not. They did. They did not. They didn't, Still, she's like, no, you're lying. It does fit. It really does fit. I mean, it kind of fits. Oh, wait, you look okay, good. see, it does fit. <laughs> and I would crank it down a little. Otherwise, it looks like a dunce cap, doesn't it? <laughs> well, that's appropriate. <laughs> so you have to like twist it down. So it fits my head, and my head is probably a medium. Well, next we'll put it on Joe's head and see what happens. Um, <laughs> super fun and easy. We have kits for these. Um, all I did was take two squares, of, two rectangles of fabric. The instructions are all there. Everything that you need, the little fur for the bottom the um, plaid for the top and um, yarn for the pom-pom is in your kit. Um, I took two pieces of fabric and this I put just some scrap batting in. I took my two rectangles of fabric, which were about, oh, it looks like they were about 17 inches long by about 12 inches wide. So about two pieces, 12 by 17. I quilted them first with just some scrap batting that I had sitting around so that it would, you know, give it some body. Um, quilted it, and then your, the pattern will um, just draw your pattern on the wrong side of your rectangle. Have your two pieces of fabric put right sides together. Stitch up, stitch down, and then you will take your little strip of um, fur, fold it in half, put the fur to the wrong side, of your, once you, you, of course you have to like sew it together, like on the long side, do that. All the instructions are in there, it's super easy. It takes like 10 minutes to make this. Um, so you're just gonna sew it to the, uh, to the wrong side, flip it out. I kind of hand tacked it down, going around, you could hot glue it as well. Make your pom-pom. We now have 
all the different sizes of pom-poms. So we had the big one for the other Santa hat pillow, which is gone. We're out of kits of those. And then we have all the sizes of pom-poms now. And I used like the, the one and five eighths inch, I think, size of pom-pom for that. So we have these in stock. These are as on the website under Patchwork Party as well. So you'll be able to make your little pom-pom. So look, making the pom-poms. So much fun. It's very cute. You know, 15, 20 minutes, okay, half hour to an hour at the most, done. And you can make one for everyone in the family and get your pictures taken. You know how they have you in all to the same jammies? Well, you could at least get people to put a hat on. Get a, get a couple, little bit of rum Christmas punch, they'll put the hat on. You'll have it, not a problem. So just really, really cute and fun. So this year we're doing, so starting next year, we're gonna kind of come back. I'm gonna, well, you know what? Let me do the mittens next. These mittens literally took me five minutes. Ask the girls who were at the Sewing Social. Girls, if you were out there, Kathy Strandell, you were at the, well, were you at that Sewing Social? Maybe not. But the girls at the Sewing Social saw me make these in like five minutes. That's the only reason they believed me. So we have kits for these. Um, these are the, there's two sizes on your pattern. So you can kind of see the two sizes here. I made the large size. There's a smaller size. What's so, the pattern called? The pattern is called Mitten Gift Card Holder. So it's to hold a gift card. Um, so the smaller one really holds the gift card. This one's a little bit bigger if you wanted to put like greens in it or something and hang it, you know, ha hang a set of mittens. Sure. So we have kits for these. Your kit comes with the fabric the pattern of course and the fur to make three pairs of mittens or six mittens got how that goes six of the large ones so you could make smaller ones as well out of your kit but six mittens cat so creamers, cute cat creamers, cat, cat she was there the I, honest honest it was like i started it and they were like you're done i'm like yeah it's really super fast so fun, so cute. And so you'll get this fabric and fur to make um, six mittens in a kit. Because I thought it would be cute if you had a garland and then you could just kind of clip them in your garland even and have them hanging with little candy canes in them. Um, you could take them and you could embroider. Like, instead of having stockings with embroidered people, embroidered people's names, Names of people, names of family members embroidered on them or yeah. friends. Yeah. You could em <laughs> you could embroider people's names on them and put little trinkets and, and candy, fill it up with candy or little gift cards or whatever. So super cute, super fun, super fast. You could make a whole bunch of these in no time. So, um, so these are the mitten gift holders. And... Um, kits and patterns available on our patchwork party section of our website for 20% off. So there. Um, moving right along, I guess, coming, kind of going through the front. Um, this, this month is the little Christmas tree mug rug, our mug rug of the month club. We'll be doing a couple other different kinds of things next year. Um, so people were asking if we're going to do something like the mug rug again, and yes, we are. So you'll just have to tune in in January to see what we've got going on because it's going to be lots of fun. So this is the mug rug of the month, December. So really pretty. It's made out of that pretty batik, holiday batik fabric. Very cool. Next year, we're going to be doing some fabric of the month clubs. And so we have three. So we have um, the batik fabric of the month club. So every month you'll get a either whichever you choose a one yard piece of batik two half yard pieces of batik or four fat quarters so every month you'll get whichever you choose so you have we have batiks then we will also be doing lori holt so you can do the lori holt um so you can build your stash with lori holt um one yard cut of lori holt two half yard cuts or um, four fat quarters and then we have buttermilk basin we love buttermilk basin so again a one yard cut of buttermilk basin 
two half yard cuts or four fat quarters. And you can pay for the year in full or you can pay monthly. And we also will ship them to you. So people, we had a lot of fun last year. We did grunge club in this way and people had a lot of fun. So when you join the club, you will get the 13th month for free. How about that? How about them fat quarters? So, so that's our story on that. A lot of fun. Um, please sign up by January 1st so that we can get your, um, get our packs made up for people. People have already been signing up. Um, so you can sign up for, um, pay monthly or um, for the year. Yes. Somebody asked about that mug rug thing. Did you see that? Uh, no, I didn't. I can't see a thing. <laughs> it's Jill. I'm Jill. Oh, okay. What can I answer? What was the question? The, uh, the mug rug. The mug rug thing, I think. The holder? I, I, I think it was. We have the mug rug? You sell the mug rug <laughs> hanger thingy. The hanger thingy. Yes, we do. Here it is right here. It is $11.99. It is not in our uh, butter in, in our buttermilk basin, in our patchwork party section of the website, but we can pop it in there for you. And we have a few of these left. Yeah, really super cute. Very nice. Yes. Yes, we do have them. Yeah, you got to have something to hang it on. Okay. Um, we still have bo um, bob um, bobbin boats. The bobbin boats are super cute, a great gift to give to yourself or to some of your quilting friends. A lot of ladies are looking for gifts for their quilting friends. The bobbin bolts are really su super cute and a fun gift to give. What do you do with them? You put your bobbins in there. They hold your bobbins. Oh, okay. I have some on my sewing table. You oh, yeah. can't see them? Yeah. <laughs> no, because they're probably buried under like 50 <laughs> projects that I have going on. <laughs> so yeah, it's under that mountain of projects that I have. I got them right there. Um, they, they work great. I love them. Awesome. Uh, we also have these little... Um, Kind of these are this is from um, sandy gervais it's a whole oh happy day you could use it as a journal you could keep notes quilty notes um, you could use it as a quilt journal it has little lines in it on the front it says oh happy day it says what else does it say find your happy place um, anything is possible so it's really cute even cute for like granddaughters and things where you know they like to keep journals or write notes and things like that so really sweet. This is, yeah, this is from, um, like I said, Sandy Gervais. Really cute. So along that same line, where did I put them? I'm gonna, I'll sneak over. Is that gonna stay up there now? Probably not. Yeah, okay. I come over to the other side because I love notebooks and I take, make lots of notes. I make lots of lists. So this is one from um, Lori Holt, Be In My Bonnet. And this is, kind of, this is really fun. And I like it because I can make my notes and check them off. So I can make my lists and check it twice. Check, check, check. Check, check, and double check. So these are really fun. I think, I bet, I would bet, I would bet because I grabbed all of these at the ninth hour. This, that, well, I know the button bolts, the bobbin bolts are, but I bet this, this, the, this little thing, and the puzzles are not in the Patrick Party section of our website, but we'll get them in there super quick. And um, this is a little Lori Holt being my bonnet puzzle. I had several other puzzle puzzles, but this is the only one that we have left. They've been very popular. I have more on order. She's coming out with a new one, and I'm going to get one, and I'm going to work on it over the summer mm. out on the front porch. Like, because I have so much extra time to sit on the front porch and do puzzles. But it's a dream of mine. I even have a ta I even bought a table at a junk store and I thought this is going to be a great puzzle table out on my front porch. Uh-huh. It's going to happen. So, puzzles. Um so we we'll be getting a couple more of those in. So they're really fun. No, they're going out, it's going to be out on the porch. The cats are not allowed outside on the front porch. Front porch. Okay. Outside in the summer. Okay. We can sit and do puzzles. Wouldn't it be fun? No. <laughs> well you can be inside watching ufo shows and i'm going to go outside and do a puzzle okay um this month's um pillow of the month is this really cute snowflake isn't this adorable i love this one this is probably one of my favorites one of my favorites look at the back it has this little white and blue polka dot so cute oh my gosh this is our pillow of the month back to the front 
It's very cute. Um, the little, I don't know if you can see it in the, um, in the camera, but it's kind of like a dotted Swiss, a white, white on white little dot for your snowflakes. Yeah, it might be hard to pick up that white on white. You can see that in this one. Yeah, and it's kind of grungy looking, kind of grungy fabric. So really fun. So this is our pillow of the month this month on the Fatrick Party section of our website. This is a fun pillow. This is a little snowman and it says Frosty and Friends Skate Rentals, 25 cents per hour. And so the pattern comes with the little the little itty bitty skates oh. all in there. Really cute. Mm -hmm. These little skates come in the pattern. I set the pattern down someplace over here, but but the instructions come with the little pattern. And then um, this is just little coloring. You can use um, fabric crayons or we have fabric markers or um, fabric um, pencils. And I just kind of colored that in a little bit to give it a little bit of pizzazz. And it really didn't take as long as I thought it was going to to stitch it out. So it's a fun thing to do while you're sitting watching TV at night. Really fun. And then it has these cute little prairie points on the bottom and it's made out of toweling. So we have some of the toweling here or you could just use regular fabric. Really fun, super cute. We have the patterns with the skates on in the patchwork party section of our website. Okay, then the last, I think, two gifty items, and then I'm going to give you a little demonstration, are the little Mighty Steamers. If you haven't gotten one of these little Mighty Steam irons, this is one that you will want to put into your retreat bag or your class bag and bring to class with you all the time. It's a great little iron. A lot of ladies have one. I had one. It's also great if you do machine embroidery because it's small enough to press something in your hoop without having to take it all the way to your iron bird. So a lot of times you need a small iron to do some tacking and this iron does the twig. And it's very cute. It's, it's a great iron to just put in your, in your retweet bag and have with you all the time. We have the fun little Kimberbell um, tape um, dispensers. This is really heavy. You can come in and pick this up. I have my um, embroidery tape in it. Um, you can put regular tape in it and just put it by your sewing machine or your desk or wherever. Just a really fun, cute, cute, cute tape dispenser. Who wants one of those boring ones from Office Max when we can have a cute one? And then I also forgot the um, little um, clipboards from, um, this is a Lori Holt clipboard from Be In My Bonnet. Really sweet and cute. I like to clip my patterns onto here because otherwise they kind of end up on the floor or underneath a stack of projects. So I like to clip my patterns on here as I'm working on them. Yes, ma'am. The buttons on the skate pillow, are they the decorative or do they actually button and unbutton? Oh, these, they're just decorative. I just sewed it right straight through to hold it all together. And then I stuffed the whole pillow. But you definitely could make it so that you could unbutton it slide your pillow form in and then slide it out for storage when you're not using it. So just up to you however you want to do that. But I made mine decorative. Okie dokie. Alrighty, let's swing back around for another fun project. Okay, so I'm going to slide over here. I'm going to slide this over. We have um, our, little our little catalog for um, classes and clubs that is out right now. If you haven't got one, we can give us a call. We can pop one in the mail to you, or you can stop by the store and pick one up. And all of these clubs and classes are uh, in the Karen's Corner of our website. So if you go into Karen's Corner up on top, you'll see all of these listed and you can just click and sign up for whatever works for you. So please check that out, and I will also put it out again. I put it out on Facebook as an issue um, catalog, so you can page right through it while you're sitting at home. All righty. We have these really cute holiday tree napkins. Really fun and cute. Aren't these cute? Have you seen these before? Have you ever made one of these? These are super fun and easy. So we have kits made up where you will make, uh, I believe, six. Maybe eight. <laughs> Two, four, six, eight. So in a kit, there's enough to make eight. And I'm going to show you how to make these. These are really fun and really fast to make. So these are kind of like 
These are kind of like the 10 minute table topper, um, the 10 minute table runner where it takes you, you know, maybe 10 minutes to make it, but 20 minutes to um, press it. This takes you 10 minutes to make, but maybe 20 minutes to figure out how to fold it. So I'm going to show you how to fold it tonight. And I'm going to give you a couple secrets so that you never have to worry about how to fold it again. Okay. So let me show you how this works. Really super fun and fast. So um, in the meantime, we have two um, kits available. One has um, this color combination with the black um, poinsettias with the green. What's it called? It is called um, Holiday Tree Napkin Kit. Holiday Tree Napkin Kit. And there's a, a black and sage combination and a red and cream combination. So I love this, the red and the white. And then it has the red on the other side. Okay, and the patterns are available as well. Um, so you can make, if out of two fat quarters, one for the front and one for the back, you can make two, um, two napkins out of two fat quarters. Okay, um, our kits give you enough to make eight. So the first thing you're going to do is to take your fabric and you're going to fold it. I just took a fat quarter so I, so I can make two. Um, so I took a fat quarter and I folded it in half and then I folded it in half again to find the center. Alrighty, I'm going to pull this over because I need it. And... Do I need to turn my iron back on? I, I'm not sure I need it. Yeah, because it's not hot. Yep, there we go. Got it. Oh, that's off. That's on. Got it. Got it, got it, got it, got it. All righty. So we're going to make, we need to make a circle. And you need to make an 18-inch circle. That's why a fat quarter is going to be plenty big to make a circle. You would take and you would put um, your two pieces of um, fabric together, right sides together. Then you're going to take this handy dandy, not this handy dandy ruler, you're going to take this handy dandy ruler. This is called the, let me get this right, quick trim and circle ruler. Next, next month, I'm going to show you how to do the quick trim with this. This you can use to, make, to do a really quick and easy half square triangle or um, flying geese. So I'll show you how to use this ruler to do some really fun and easy fat, um, half square triangles and flying geese. But you could also use this as just a plain three and a half by 12 and a half inch ruler because it has all of the markings. You can see that it has lots of grippies on it. Love lots of grippies you want on the grip on the right here. So you've got three and a half inches by 12 and a half. You can't see the grippies unless I lift, kind of lift it up, but you can see all these little things are all your little grippies. So that keeps it from sliding around as you're using it. And like I said, next month, I'm going to show you how to use the lines on here to do quick and easy flying geese and half square triangles. <clears throat> but in the meantime, I am going to show you, now I know I took a pin and I stuck it into something so I would have it. Here it is. Ha! Huh. So, on this ruler, on this ruler, I'm not sure if you can see it, there are little holes. There are holes at every inch, and then down here at like every quarter inch, sure. eighth inch. Okay, so you can see those holes. We're going to use those holes to make a circle. So, I have folded, as I indicated, I folded my fabric in half both directions so that I can find the center point of my piece of fabric. Okay? I can see that the center point is right there. I'm going to take my ruler. Usually we always use it so that the grippy is down. This time I'm going to turn it so that the grippy is moving up because I don't want this to kind of stick and stop as I go along making my circle. I will take and I will put the pin in like the end, the little end point, the last circle on through the last hole of my ruler. And I'm just going to stick it right in there. Okay? So there is a, there's a hole every inch. So if I 
put my pen in the first for, from one inch from my from my pin, I'm actually going to make a two inch circle. Make sense? If I put it in the, the two inches away from my pin, it's going to make a four inch circle. And if I put it um, one, two, three inches from my pin, it's going to make a six inch circle. See how that works? Super simple. So, yeah, huh? You're ticky. Yeah. Did you get, do you got that? And we're going to use this. We're going to use this in not too long um, for another pattern that we're going to be doing. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to do it in January. It might be February, but we'll see. Um, but we'll be using this to make some circles then. So to make your circles for your um, napkins, you have to go out nine. And I, my my um, little mat isn't wide enough. My mat at home is. So I'm not going to go out that quite that far. But you're going to go out nine so that you get an 18-inch circle. But I just want to show you how this is going to work. So I'm going to go out like this far. And all I'm going to do is take my Frixion pen or any other pen, stick it through the hole, and go around in a circle. Oops, keep things out of the way there. And just go around in a circle. And now I have my circle made. Can you see that? Yep. Isn't that cool? How much easier can it be? Kind of see that part. Yep. Yeah, I didn't push very hard, but um, right here. That's okay. Yeah, but you can see the circle. All you do is go around in a circle. Put it in and go round and round and around we go. Super simple. Sweet. Okay, so then the next thing you're gonna do, because you have two fab layers of fabric put together, um, you can put some pins in here if you'd like. You don't have to, but you can. If it makes you feel better, put some pins in. And then you're going to shorten up your stitch to about two, to um, from 2.4 to two, and stitch all the way around your circle. All the way around your circle. Then you're going to take, and you're going to use, you can kind of see where you have your line dissecting. You're just going to draw a line going through the middle of your circle. Okay, over this way. And I think this is an old Frixia pen. I just found this one sitting in my desk. There it comes. Okay. And you're going to draw a line through the center of your circle. So, after, so right here is what you're going to do. So, here I have, I'm not, I, I should have done this in black so you could actually see it. So, on this, I have stitched around my circle. I used a pinking shears to trim within like about an eighth of an inch away. And then I drew my line. Can't see anymore. Here's my line. I drew my line down my center. And then I stitched and I started here, kind of went towards the center, back stitched here, left about an inch, inch and a half, and then stitched on again. And about probably about a half an inch. That's like the side of my presser foot along that edge, quarter to a half an inch. So then I started here, backstitched again, went to the end. Started here, backstitched, went to the end. I don't know if you can see that very well. Do I, if I hold it up a little? Does that help at all? So you can kind of, I should have done it in black. So I started here. So I have my line all the way down through the center of my circle. And I'm going to stitch on each side of that line, starting here, backstitch. And come all the way down, back stitch here, leave a space, start here, back stitch, stitch all the way down to the end, and back stitch here. Then do the same thing on the side. I just put the side of my presser foot here, back stitch, stitched all the way down. Good thing I can stitch straighter than I can draw. Back stitch there, left about an inch, inch and a half, back stitched, stitched all the way to the end, and back stitch at the end. Easy peasy. The instructions tell you to cut this first and then do that stitching. I found it to be much easier if it was all together to do that stitch. Then you don't have to worry about things opening up and moving and things. So at that point, so now you can kind of see with this one because I did it in black. So you can see here's half. So what you're going to do after you do all that stitching is cut right along that line in the center. Okie dokie. And you have an opening here. So then you're going to turn it right side out. 
just like this. So I turned it right side out um, and then I just did a top stitch all the way around with um, coordinating thread or you know matching thread whatever make whatever makes you happy. Um, do you could do um, if you have like a nice if you have some metallic fabric a nice metallic thread would be pretty. So you're so you're basically making a half a circle. Okay, easy peasy, right? Alrighty. So now the fun begins. So if you want, so the fabric that you kind of want to be your main fabric showing, when you fold, and I'll probably and I'll flip this around so that it shows for you. When you do that, you're going to put your main fabric. You're going to put the back fabric facing towards you. Okay. You're going to measure from one end in um, five and a half inches. Okay. So you're going to fold right at that five and a half inches. All right. That's easy so far, right? Got it? Piece of cake. All right. So now you're just going to kind of pick this up and you're going to kind of flip it so that when you fold it, your raw edge will, or you're not your raw edge, but your top edge will match to this fold. So you're going to end up kind of going, you know, like this a little bit until you can get it to just match. Okay. So it's almost like a fan fold. So you're going to kind of fold it back and then fold it over again until this, these two folds match and this edge matches that fold. Okay, then I give it a nice press. Is it still on? Still on? Sort of. Come on, light up for me. And then I'm going to press it. Alrighty. And her instructions on folding this is okay. Not great, but okay. We will have samples in the store. And we all know how to fold this so we can help you. So at that point, you're now going to take this and you're going to flip it upside down. And you're going to do the exact same thing again. Except I don't have that very lined up very nice. But you're going to do exactly the same thing again. You're going to kind of fold it, fold it, and just fold it once. So you're going to kind of take this and you're going to kind of almost like fold this back in half. So that this um, top edge is going to line up with your fold. And once that, does, once that lines up, then this will line up with your other folds over there. Okay? It's not too hard. You can do it. But now you have a video, so you can come and watch the video. And I would get this matched up a little bit nicer, so they kind of end up in a point like we have here. So then the thing, oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Joe. <laughs> keep them down. There you go. Oh, keep them down. Okay, they're down. Okay. He's, I'm up and down and up and down. <laughs> So um, I love this combination. I think that's a lot of fun. So um, once you do that, that's where the instructions end. But we added a little bit of a little bit of a help to you, and I lost it now. Where'd it go? Uh oh, I'm gonna get in trouble. So just stitch. Oh, nope. Come on. Where's the one that? Oh, come on. Where is it? All right, I lied. It's got to be the last. One. Oh, it's not. What happened to it? Okay. At any rate, I lost the one that sh that we had for the demo one, but that's okay. Doesn't matter. So you've got this all all nicely pressed, and you might have used it, and now you're going to throw it in the wash, and you might not use it again until next year. So now you have to figure out next year how to fold these things again. Doesn't yeah yeah not going to work. So what we did is we took and where you have the fold. We put a line of stitching. So we opened it up, and wherever you have a fold, we just did a line of stitching. And what that does is it helps keep everything together so that once you wash it, it doesn't kind of pull apart and you don't have to, you know, get everything lined up again and press it. So it keeps it all, it's almost like quilting it to keep it in place. And then wherever you have that line, now you know that's where you're going to fold it. So you don't have to figure that out all over again. And I promise you, she had one for me that was stitched and I lost it. So, but that's what you want to do. So put that line of stitching in there. It's not in the instructions, but that is going to help you. So you don't have to figure this out again next year because you're not going to want to do that. So any questions on that? Really super fun and easy. The little, the quick trim ruler makes it fast and fun to make circles. And you can make all the way up to... 
um, a 21 inch circle on this with this ruler. And those are napkins? These are napkins. Wow. Aren't they cute? Yeah. Adorable. You know, you could make these out of, you know, scrap fat quarters of the holiday fabric and everybody could have different ones. They don't all have to match. But we do have the two different kits with the two different um, color waves of napkins. Super fun and easy. They, yeah. As, as much time as it takes you to make a circle and fold it, it's really super easy. So that was fun. That was a fun project. Um, doesn't take very long to do. So let me put this away. And um, let me tell you about this quilt. Can, Joe, can you get a good picture of that? Do I have stuff in the way? Okay, this is called Fair Isle. This is going to be one of the blocks of the month that we'll, we will be doing next year. It's ob obviously, it's a batik. It's from Island Batik. And to make this quilt, pro we'll be doing this um, monthly. So uh, I will show you how to do the block. You will have time in the store to actually work on your blocks while you're here. It looks, it looks a little daunting, doesn't it? But it is really not. My points came out perfect and it's all in the rulers. So we will be using three, I think three of the um, <clears throat> Deb Tucker Studio 180 rulers. You might already have some of those in your stash if you've ever been to a quilt show. She's at a lot of the quilt shows. She's very, she does a great demonstration. And you probably bought one. And then you got it home and a lot of the girls have said, yeah, I've got that ruler and I've never used it. I don't know what it's for. So you're going to learn how to use it. And not only will you learn how to use it to make this quilt, but she has a myriad of other quilt patterns and table runner patterns and all kinds of fun patterns to go with each of the rulers that you um, will be using to make this quilt. So this will take us all next year. It's 98 by 98. Um, you can pay for this um, in full or you can pay for it monthly as we go along. But it's a, it was really fun to make. And it turned out really well. All, you can see all my points turned out good. And it's not because I'm that good, it's the ruler. It's the ruler. So you'll learn something really new, something really different. You'll learn new, a new way to make all of those flying geese. I know you're looking at them going, I don't know about those flying geese. But they go really fast. You make four at a time and you don't make them all in one month. So it is split up. So really fun. This is called Fair Isle by Island Boutiques. It is beautiful. The closer you get, the better it is. I know. I know. We still have to get our binding on, but um, we got her done. So that's that. Next year, we will have a Lori Holt club because we, have, we lo just love Lori Holt. I love Lori Holt. So you have a choice of making two quilts. This quilt um, is the flea mar is called Flea Market. And I, I can't remember. Uh, it's like 96 by 96, I think. So it's like a king, it's like a king size quilt. Um, we'll be doing this throughout the year again. Um, you can make this quilt if you don't want to make something quite this large. You can also make the prim quilt. Or you can make them both. Um, so during class, we will find out, um, we'll see all the new things that she has coming out. You know, she has a lot of new stuff coming out next year. Um, she has a seed pack um, quilt coming out next year. I can't wait. I already have the patterns um, ordered and it's really cute. It has, it's a really cute idea. So anything new Lori Holt you'll see and learn about every month. And um, in the meantime, you'll be working on these beautiful quilts. And again, we'll have, um, we'll have, I'll tell you about the block and then you will have time to make it, work on it in class. And I will also, for this, for the fair aisle and for this one, um, I'll also do a video online. So in case you, so there's a lot of people who can't come to class um, and who work, but want to do the projects, you, I will go through the block every month online for you. So that way, even if you're doing it in class and you get home and go, I, I, I can't remember what she said. You can go and see the video and that will help you work on your project. So in store or online for both of these projects. Awesome. It'll be awesome. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. I can't wait. January is going to be is right around the corner, girls. 
So those two in January. And then don't forget, I can't, I don't have anything to show you for it, but our fabulous fabric box mystery is also starting in January. That is $60 and you will get a fabulous box of fabrics to make a quilt. And if you remember, if you've ever done that with us before, you will get a box and it will show you um, a variety of fabrics that are in your quilt project. So there'll be some batik ones, there'll probably be a Lori Holt one, there might be a, uh, a buttermilk basin, there might be, you know. So there's gonna be all different choices and you will come in and pick out your box and we will work on the um, quilt every month. And again, I will show you the project in the store and then you'll have time to work on your block um, for that as well. So all of that information, all of, more inf all of this information and more is in this little booklet. So if you haven't picked up one of these, please pick one up. Let us know, we're happy to ship it to you and um, you can print it off online as well. So that's that. What else do I have? Oh, I have another cute project. Um, so I have these cute little um, wine butler vests to go on little bottles of wine as you give them as a gift. Are those fun? These are so cute. These I'm take so you like, mm, no, yeah, <laughs> wine, wine. <laughs> the girls were excited when I brought these in today too. They're like, party? I'm like, yes, after patchwork party. Um, so really, these are just really cute. So the instructions are um, to make one out of regular fabric, but we will, but I also thought that it would be a lot of fun to make it out of the cork fabric. So I put all of our cork fabric online. The, the cork one is even easier because it's just cork. So cute, so fun. So let the, and the pattern shows um, two different sizes. Whoops, the pattern shows two different sizes and let me show you how this works. Super fast and easy. I made this like in a half an hour. It was so fun. What's the name of the ruler to make the circle? Quick trim, um, it's the quick trim and circle ruler. It should be online. It should be in patchwork party section of our website. If you can find it, I know the girls put it on there. Uh, oh, and I got another project right here. Don't let me forget that one. I don't even have that out to show you yet. Okay, so to make the little wine butler, he's so cute. All right, got all my little goo bags here. Um, I use little beads for the buttons. On the vest, you could use little eighth inch or um, like little eighth inch buttons and a little ribbon to tie his little butt, his little vest around the bottle. Yeah, you can show cuter. Okay, so that comes in two sizes. I made the larger size, um, and I'll show you the, the smaller size. I did make that, this is just for display, but this will make, this is what the smaller size looks like when you get it all kind of made and put on there. So that's a little bit smaller. So there's two sizes. I made the larger size. And if you make it out of cork, it's even kind of bigger, and I'll tell you about that in a second. So, the instructions tell you to use like cardboard or, um, um, you know, template vellum or whatever to make your pattern. I use good old fashioned freezer paper because I can make a whole bunch of these and iron them on and keep ironing them on and use the pattern over and over again to do this. So, I'm there, there we go. So, um, I so down right by your feet are some um, wine fabrics that would make really cute little wine butlers. So those are on the Patrick Party section of our website. So just some really cute fabrics to choose. It says one um, fat quarter or a quarter of a yard um, of two fabrics, one for, the one for the outside and one for the lining. Okay, so I use this little one that has all the little um, wine names on it. Mm -hmm. So you're going to cut out your pattern pieces. These are the two different sizes. So you can trace them from the pattern onto the not the non, oops, I gotta lay them down. Sorry. <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> to, on the non shiny on one side of your um, part of your um, freezer paper is shiny. The other side is dull. So you want to trace these onto the dull side of your um, freezer paper, okay? Then if you look at the pattern, it says place on fold. Remember good old fashion, fashion place on fold when you're doing garment sewing? 
So you're going to place this on the fold and cut it out. Cut one for the outside and one for the lining. Just like that. Okie dokie. And this was my smaller one. So you can see one for the outside, one for the lining. You'll lay these right sides together, sew them around, and leave a hole. I kind of left a hole right here for, for turning. Okay, quarter inch seam going all the way around it. Turn it right side out, press it. You're pretty much done. So then you end up with, where do you go? Okay, so at that point, so when I first did this, and I'm gonna take this, when I first did this, I made it and then I put it around my bottle and I went, oh my gosh, there's something wrong. Because I put it around my bottle, see how this goes around? And you think that this is the neck of your bottle, this little C area, because you would think it would just go around, you know, like it was going around it like this. But you put it on and then you go, wait a minute, this doesn't fit, this is all wrong, what's wrong with it? It the opposite way, so that this part goes around your bottle and this is your front. That kind of weird, a little bit weird. So, but you'll know if you do it the wrong way, because you'll go, this doesn't fit, this is very strange. So what you'll do once you've sewn this, once you've pressed it, then I top stitched around it, whoops, laying it down, top stitched around it, the whole thing, just like a, about a eighth of an inch, quarter to an eighth of an inch all the way around to give it a little stitching. I could have made it a darker to give it a little pizzazz. And then you're going to take and overlap these two guys. So you'll just take your fronts and you're just going to overlap this one section, that little kind of straight section, just like that. And then I just like restitched it right here. Mm -hmm. And then I just hand sewed the little beads on and stitched, just kind of tacked on the little um, ribbons to tie around, done. Very cool. That's all you have to do. Super fun, super fast, super cool. So you can make a whole bunch of these. Give them to everybody for Christmas. It's so cute. Do you love it? I love it. So this is the wine butler. We don't have any kits made up, but um, a quarter of a yard or a fat quarter of fabric, and that is big enough to make the large and then certainly big enough to make a small. So fun. Any questions on how to do that? Cool, right? Okie dokie, I have one more project and then a couple of little things to show you yet. So, at a certain point, you wanna give gift cards to people. So we have the little gift card mittens, but we also have the little gift card case. So this is my little gift card case. Flips over and turns like this. We have kits made up for this. Um, each kit makes five gift card cases. So you'll have, get two pieces of fabric, the ribbon and um, Velcro, little Velcro tabbies mm -hmm. to make your little gift card case. This takes no time at all. It was so, it's really fun. Put it down again. I'm sorry, putting it down, putting it down. I got the put down. <laughs> we got the put down. Opens up just like this. Really fast and fun. This is a great project too, and like the mittens or the um, the um, napkins. It's a great project to do with the daughters and the granddaughters who are maybe just learning to sewing, to sew and how to um, kind of get them interested in sewing because they're fun and they're fast and they get like immediate gratification, which is what they want. All right, so um, the instructions. So the instructions have you t um, take and copy, oops, copy the pattern, <laughs> copy the pattern onto cardstock. So I just ran that through my printer and copied it onto cardstock. Okay, so piece of cake. You're gonna have an inside and an outside. The inside is slightly smaller than the outside. As you can see it then on the inside, you have just a little bit of border of your outside fabric showing on your inside. Cause you know, if you made these two, if you made the inside and the outside the exact same size, you know that's not gonna fit. And the outside, you know how that, you, you just know. No matter how hard you work, you know it's not going to fit. So inside is slightly smaller than the outside. So I copied that onto um, cardstock. 
Then you're going to cut each piece out. So you'll have an inside and then you'll have an outside piece. So this is where I kind of veered off. Of course, I had to veer off of the instructions a little bit because you know, it's just what I do. So what she has you do is take um, soft fuse, wonder under whatever, whatever you have heat and bond and bond that to the back of your cardstock. I didn't do that. I took it and instead I fused it. Good. I fused it to my fabric instead. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why in a second. So I've fused that and I've put that onto the outside of my project. Now I'm going to do this onto the inside and I just cut a square of fabric that was a little bit bigger than my pattern piece. Now I'm going to kind of pop this off, peel off my backing on my fusible web, and then I'm going to kind of just stick this on. And you can press right on your cardstock. And that's where this little iron comes in handy, let me tell you. I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to give it another little press, but just on the cardstock, not on the fabric itself. Okay? Just to kind of hold it in place. Is this hot? Yep, that's still hot. Okay, I need, hope I brought a bigger scissors than this one, but this will work. I lost my other scissors. Okay, so you're going to trim. I want to give this a little bit better press. And while I'm doing that, I know I put that other set of scissors in here. Yep, here they are. Okay, good, 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 good. Nope, that's my pinking shears, but that'll work too. Okay, so give that a nice little fuse. I'm going to cut with my pinking shears just because they're bigger. And you're going to leave this, this can be about a half inch to a quarter of an inch larger on the sides. And then I'm going to kind of trim around the top a little bit and kind of curve this just like the top of my little card case. Okay? Then, and this is not in the instructions either, I take and I kind of clip right here and here in the corner and clip that extra little piece out right there. And I'm going to do the same over here. Clip that out. Alrighty. Then I'm going to come up around the top and I'm going to clip this as well. So I'm going to come around and she does not have you do this clipping. What she has you do, and I'm going to tell you about that in a second, and then just about a quarter of an inch all the way around make little clips. Alrighty, just little clips from the outside of the fabric and then stop when you hit your, your, um, your cardboard. Okay, and then I'm going to make another little clip here and clip this extra out. Alrighty, just like that. So I've made little clips about a quarter of an inch all the way around. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be well me measured or anything. And then I'm going to start and I'm going to press. I'm going to take this, I'm going to start at the bottom and I press this up. Now, because I have, oh, not sticking here, because I have put the heat and bond or your fusible webbing on the entire piece of fabric, it will now stick when you fold this over. If you don't do that, you know, you know when you press something like this, what's it going to do? It's just going to immediately pop right back. No matter how hard you press, it will just pop right back. So I take and I just press all of this as I go around. So by putting the fusible web on this, it will hold it in place and stick it right down. So again, this is another great project, project to do with the granddaughters and daughters. Because they can all do this. Alrighty. Then I'm going to come around, hold that down a little bit longer, but I would make sure I'd hold that on there just so that it would totally stick. I don't have it on high. That's my problem. Okay. And then you're going to come around and start just folding in these tabs on my finger. I'm just going to like put my finger down and flip these tabs in and press. And because you put the fusible web on there, it's going to stick. I'm trying to get this. I'm having problems with my little iron today. Okay. Yep, it's working. And so I'm going to keep going all the way around, pressing those in. 
and the fusible web will make them stick down. What she wanted you to do was make little pleats. And I'm like, these little pleats are not gonna work. So you're gonna keep going all the way through until it looks like this. So you can see how I've pressed this all the way down. It's all nice and flat, all together even. Okie dokie. Then I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna take my ruler. Any ruler will do it. You can see where there's three fold lines. One fold, two fold, three fold. Take that and I line up my ruler on this and then I flip this up and I give it a press. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna flip it right along the ruler and kind of give it a crease. Do the same on this one over here. Flip it up, give it a crease. Oops, okay. So on this one, once I've got all this done, I'm going to take my ribbon, right here's a piece of ribbon. So you can see where it tells you to have your placement line of ribbon. So what I kind of did is I slid it up here and I kind of lined up my ruler on that placement line and then just flipped and I made these shorter. I made it about like, about this big. And I took, you know how you have little snippets of this, you got stuff like, you've got stuff like this left over all the time. I just take a little piece of, the, of my steam -a seam and I just laid it on here, ironed it on. My iron went back off again, but I would iron that on and then I would peel and stick my little ribbon here, one here, and then the same, I would do the same with this one up here. Line this up, pull my ribbon up, fuse them in place. You could use a little hot, hot glue, you could use a little apple glue, whatever, whatever you like. But it's a great way to use up some of your pieces of fusible web. Okie dokie. At that point, you will just take this, lay this on top, binder clip them together, and then just top stitch all the way around with matching or coordinating thread. Hold them all together, and then add your little Velcro, and then I'll add like a little button on here to cover up. I, I, you can fuse this little Velcro down, but you know, it never sticks. So I just did a little sewing machine tack down on the Velcro to hold it in place. And then since it makes a mark on the outside, I'll put a little, a little button there. And then I have the cutest of the cutest little card cases. And here again, you could take your fabric and you could, before you put this all together, you could machine embroider the, um, somebody's name on those, hang them in the tree, in your, in your little Christmas tree, and they could come along and pick out their, their gift card or their little gift or put it in a um, little garland hanging with their names on. So really fun, really cute, something that the kids can make, help you make. And they can make them for their kids in school and you know teachers and that type of thing. So that's, that's my little um, case for gift cards. Any questions on that one? Pretty simple, right girls? You can do this, little scraps of fabric at leftover Christmas fabrics. Um, you could do this for Valentine's Day, any, for birthdays, anything. So it's a great little um, gift card case for any occasion. Alrighty, so I told you about that. I told you about our clubs. Um, there was one other thing I was gonna show you. Oh, we have um, another great thing to use for um, the backs of your quilts. We have a little panel that has, and maybe I should turn it the other way, but it's um, um, labels, already pre-made labels that you can fill in. Yeah, you could, and see them all. Do I have it upside down and backwards, or? It doesn't matter, you can see it. So this is kind of a bad one that we, the, it's kind of cut cricket from the beginning of the bolt, but you can see the different um, quilt labels that are on the, on the panel. So you could, yeah, there's a lot of them. You can embroider on them. You can use um, fabric markers and write on them, write your message on there, and you will be good to go. Absolutely very, very cool. So we have these panels as well. I'm not sure these got thrown onto the patchwork party section of the website either. Oops, we went a little flippy. <laughs> 
the gimbal, the gimbal, there it goes. <laughs> the gimbal went a little crazy there. Um, so um, if I don't have something on the website and you want to see it, um, just let me know and we'll make sure that we get it on there. And the last club that I want to tell you about this year, coming up this year, is our Aurafil Thread Club. And I think I told you about this before. You will get three spools of fabulous Aurafil thread that you can use for embroidery, applique, quilting, piecing. Um, and the colors that they are choosing from um, kind of go along with flowers in the rainforest. So every month you will get three spools of thread and you'll get them for obviously 12 months. And when you sign up, you will also get for free the carrying case of Aurafil thread. So you will keep the entire year's worth of thread in your carrying case. This holds 40 threads, you'll get 36. So you'll have room for your basics, black, white, and beige. Um, so here again, this starts in January. You can join, and I think this is quarterly. So you can pay quarterly or by the year for the entire year. And when you sign up, you get the free case to go along with it. So every month you'll get some great thread to add to your um, thread stash. And there's a free pattern that we will show you every month that goes along with it. Did I miss anything, girls? Joe's like, no, no, no. He's getting hungry. It's time for dinner. Um, yeah, I think I got it all. <sighs> Was that enough? Have you got some fun and fast ideas? It's things that you can still do with some scraps of fabric and some patterns, and you're good to go. Um, so this, I think, is our last video for the year, possibly. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> I don't know. I might do a Merry Christmas one from the beach or something, right. hopefully, if we make it. And, um, and um, until, the, until I see you again, have, if I don't see you before, have the merriest of Christmases and the happiest of New Year's. And I hope that you can get together with your families and, and have just the most blessed holiday season of all. So um, don't forget, oh, I forgot the date, 14th? Ah, okay, well, you'll, you'll hear about it. We have a skinny bolt sale coming up in January at the beginning of January sometime, in the first couple weeks of January. Um, but you'll see more about it. And until then, um, keep in touch. If you have any questions about anything, you know where to get me. And have that, like I said, a very happy holiday season. And until we see you again, bye. 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 Bye, Joe. Bye, Joe. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.